This is Professor McDonald. In this video, I'm going to explain how to answer this question where you're supposed to graph, match the graph with the appropriate correlation coefficient. And so you might need to know what a correlation coefficient is. That is a measurement that can be calculated with a formula using ordered pairs. And that's a lesson, a separate lesson, how to calculate it. But right here, we're trying to understand its meaning. And we're looking at different sets of ordered pair graphs called scatter plots. And we're trying to figure out which correlation coefficient goes with each one of those out of these choices. Now notice that they are all between negative 1 and positive 1 because linear correlation is measured in two ways strength and also the direction of the trend. So before I get into more details on how that works, let's connect this with something else that you probably are more familiar with. First of all, the linear co correlation coefficient, let's highlight the word linear, is related to linear equations. All right, so looking back at these, the idea is that we want to see if we can find a line that fits the dots well to use for making predictions. And if we think about linear equations from algebra, you might remember y equals mx plus b. And let's focus in on the letter m there, which represents the slope, which you were told is rise over run. Like you start at one point and you go up and over like staircase way to get a steepness. So the slope is the steepness. Okay. And there were four different types of slopes you could get on a linear equation. You could have a positive slope where your m would be a positive number and your line would then from left to right, because remember you read lines and graphs in general, you read them from left to right, just like you read words and sentences from left to right. So if you think about taking this little line shape here, if you start at a dot, here you would be going up and over with a certain steepness, and from left to right, it's going upward. And the steepness can vary, and your M will be larger the more steep it is, and smaller the less steep it is. And if you get all the way down here, then you're at zero. And so that's the next thing I have written here. Zero slope forms a horizontal line. And then when you start going below the horizontal, from left to right, you can see how this would be from left to right going downward. So that would be a negative slope. And then there's undefined slope, which usually doesn't come into play in this context. So the first three are the ones we want to focus on using that knowledge to help us with this problem. Now the linear correlation coefficient is not the same thing as the slope and that's why it only ranges from negative one to positive one and the sign of the linear correlation coefficient would be the same sign as the line of best fit would have for its slope. And then we will look at the actual number or the quantity to help us determine the steepness. So let's just draw a line of best fit on these things just by eyeballing it. This one looks like I could probably draw a line of fit here. And, you know, that could be slightly different, but that looks about right. And so if that's the line that fits the best, what slope does it have? Well, from left to right, it's going upward, so that one's got a positive slope. So let's just make a note there. Positive has a positive slope, so then the linear correlation will be positive too because the linear correlation coefficient uses the slope when it's being calculated. All right, now the second one here. That one's a little questionable. I saw right away this. So that looks positive, but I also see this. So we got a little bit of both going on there. And typically when you have both going on, they cancel each other out. And so I'm guessing that this one is going to have a slope that's close to zero. 
And so the linear correlation coefficient will also be close to zero. And then this one is very obviously downward. So that's going to be a negative correlation coefficient. And the last one here, well, it's a little, it's not quite clear. Let's kind of draw a box around this so it's more clear what we're, oh, it's not a box, it's a circle. It's a box. I just want to be able to kind of view just the dots that go with this because the two scatter plots are kind of close to each other there. All right, so just looking at those dots inside the box, what pattern do you see right away? Do you notice an area that you would draw the line of best fit? For me, I'm thinking maybe like this, but it's not real clear. It could be even like this. Uh, yeah, maybe even like this. I mean, the problem here is that the dots are not tightly formed. They're not close together, forming a very clear linear pattern. So for that reason, this one also is going to have a slope or a linear correlation coefficient that's close to zero. But it definitely looks more positive to me than anything else. So now let's choose from our options up here. We'll start narrowing it down. Okay, so first of all, the only one that was negative really clearly is this one. And there's a pretty strong picture of a line formed there. So I would guess that I'm going to have a pretty high linear correlation coefficient. Remember, from negative 1 to positive 1. This one should be close to negative 1 since it's negative. And it's not like a nice tight, tight line. So if I had to say, looking at that, how well do those dots form a line? Like what percentage would you give it? I would say hmm, maybe 70% or maybe even a little stronger. On the stronger side, so close to negative 1, right? One like this. All right. So let's see if we have an option that fits that. So this popped out right away, negative 0.85. So notice that 0.85% is pretty strong. It's moderately strong. And it's a negative, so that fits very well. So I'm very confident that the answer for this one has got to be D. All right. So now we have three others to choose between, and we have their positive, but this one is the strongest out of all three of them. So out of my remaining scatter plots that have been uh, unidentified, the strongest linear pattern was in this one. And I think 0.73, like 73% strength, that could be about right. So I'm going to say that this one is D. Okay, so now we have two more. We have this one and this one that are both close to zero. And they're both positive, but one of them is slightly stronger. So now we just have to determine which one of these two scatter plots. I'll draw a box around this one also. Which one of the two scatter plots in the boxes seem like they have a stronger linear pattern. Now, in some ways, this is stronger because the, the dots are closer together on this one and closer together um, when you look at fitting with this line right here. However, when you have that happening in both directions, they tend to cancel each other out in the calculation of the R value. So I'm going to guess that this one is weaker, closer to zero, than this one is. Right, so let's go ahead and say that the weaker one, 0.19, is going to be the answer here. And the slightly stronger one, B, will be the answer here. 
Now, spoiler alert, I've already checked the answers and that is correct, the correct way to assign those. And we could do um, another one. Let's go ahead and just find another example. Okay, so now looking at this all in a glance, you might figure out the answers pretty quickly. It looks like this one right here would have to be the positive stronger one, strongest positive one. So this one would be C. This one is strongly negative, so it would have to be D. And these two are kind of a toss up. This one looks more clear to me. It looks to have an upward trend. And this one, again, I see that it could go, I could maybe fit a line through here going upward, or I could even fit a line through here going downward. So I'm thinking this one's going to have the weaker correlation. So which one of these is weaker? I'd say A is going to go, oh, ooh, but ooh, I'm not as confident on this one because to me, this one does look more clearly negative, and this one does look more clearly positive. And so we have a different sign on these two. Hmm. Let's go with the positive one for this guy and the negative one for this guy and see how we do. Did I get it? I got it. Yeah. That's right. That's right. One more. Can we do more and more? All right, uh, okay, strong positive right here. So let's give that answer A. Strong negative right here. So let's give that answer B. And then this one's pretty moderately strong positive. So let's go with, C. yes, let's go with B. And that leaves just D, which looks like it makes sense because it is mostly downhill. And it is not very tightly formed, so point negative point two two sounds about right. That's me. All right, so happy hunting when you're trying these. Try a few of them, get used to it, and I'll see you in the next video.